Hey mi gente, it's Juni and Steve. You already know my name, but if you're new here, hey! Today we're going to be talking about a topic I've been thinking about for a while, but I didn't know how to go into the topic, and it's about colorism, specifically Afro-Latinos experiencing colorism, and it's not going to be only based in... Actually, it is going to be based in the entertainment industry, but it's going to be more things in between and the reason why i thought about doing it right now is because i remembered a comment i made on fd signifiers video about colorism specifically black men experiencing colorism and and how it affects them within the industry the the, the movie and movie industry whatever and i agree to some extent certain things that he was saying in that video but not, now that we're in 2023 there are certain parts i disagree but i'm not going to talk about that in this video this is just about what experiences that certain people i'm going to mention in this video have experienced or in general when it comes to brown to dark skin afro latinos we're going to talk about that and more in this video enjoy Originally, I was going to make a video on black men in the whole diaspora experiencing colorism, but then I realized that I do not have enough time and I work. So, sorry if you feel excluded, but for my sanity, I was like, we're going to keep this on Afro Latino men because if I do the whole diaspora, that's so much research, so much time. And then the follow up video is going to be coming out. I don't know when, but it's going to come out. It is a very complex video. So, yeah. Like Afro Latinas who are brown to dark skinned, Afro Latinos who are brown to dark skinned are not represented as light skinned Afro Latinos in the media. This includes films, TV shows, news anchors, and influencers. It's usually lighter skinned Afro Latinos or mixed race Afro Latinos representing. Like I said in my Afro Latinos and America's Understanding video, publications that are Latino based exclude darker skinned Afro Latinos from their publications. Same thing with American media. It's rare when I see someone with my complexion being represented. It really is and it's sad because there are people who do not think that people my complexion or darker exist. There has to come a point where we're gonna all be represented or we're not gonna be all represented. And what bothers me is that there are Afro Latinos who know they benefit from being lighter skinned, who do not advocate for darker skinned representation and or recommending darker skinned Afro Latinos in their causes and in their works and stuff. Because I have a bunch of examples if you've seen previous videos of mine, but it's it just gets to a point where it gets annoying, it gets repetitive, and it's not fair. It's not. For example, Sarunas Jackson did an interview back in 2017 when he joined Insecure and then he talked about how he is being represented as an Afro Latino character in the show while Leon Noel is not being represented as an Afro Latino on the show. Then he acknowledges that there are biases between him and Noel due to the fact that he is lighter skinned versus Noel being darker skinned. He states, It's good to give opportunities to different types of people who have all these different stories to tell, he said. We need to tell our own stories, especially for Latinos, so that we can show how diverse we all are. People think we only have the one type of look, but 
even me and Daniel look different and we're both Afro Panamanian. He has more African descent than I do, but we're both Latinos at the end of the day. In Panama, there's an area that has a large community of Asians, but they speak full on Spanish. These are the type of stories I hope to tell one day when I create my own content. As I stated in my Afro Latino representation good and bad this fall video, I give Sorana's credit for acknowledging his privilege, but I didn't go into more detail on this part of the video. So we're doing that now. I do want to mention one thing. When he refers to Daniel, he's talking about Neon, just so everyone knows. But seriously, so honest, I give you credit for using your time and um, for bringing in knowledge on how diverse Latinos are on your interview because I know that's your time to shine but you took the opportunity to spread awareness and I feel like we need more um, we need more people like you within the community especially because you're mixed race and a lot of mixed race Afro Latinos or even yeah mixed race Afro Latinos do not like to spread awareness or give people that are darker than them a shot to get represented and I'm specifically talking about people who are fully black with two black parents so I give him props even though Angelica Machado is not an Afro-Latino, she is an Afro-Latina and she said certain things that I resonate with. She states, the most racist experience I had in college was from an Afro-descendant man who was light-skinned and often made fun of my accent. He was like a lot of light-skinned Afro-descendant people who get to walk around without black consequences because in many ways the world doesn't demand it of them. If you are a light skinned black person, being aware of your blackness is optional. Ooh, this is a hot topic. I get what she's saying because I have similar experiences too, but I do want to acknowledge that yes, black people and mixed with black people experience racism or a harder life to some degree compared to other groups of people. That is true, but we also have to acknowledge there is a hierarchy on who is more quote unquote desirable. And I do not want to pretend that lighter skinned black people versus a biracial person who happens to be lighter skin experiences the same experience because I can easily tell the difference between somebody who is fully black but they happened to be lighter skinned versus someone who is biracial and of course that is a hot take but that's just my experience growing up and stuff most of the time I do get it right when it comes to somebody who is actually biracial or someone who is actually fully black to black parents. I do get certain things that Angelica was saying about how, for example, about her accent being made fun of. To certain degrees, I experienced that similarly. If I mispronounce something or pretty much that I get made fun of but it's always with people in general not like not just specifically light skinned black people or night or um, biracial people it's um it's a in general situation with me to this day there are certain times I do get insecure when it comes to making mistakes with mispronouncing words or mispronouncing people's names but at the end of the day I am not perfect and I could do the best I can and I also have to remember that that that's why people just gotta learn how to either keep their thoughts to themselves or if you want to genuinely 
help someone who is struggling with certain words or um, names or whatever, just do it in a polite way. Do not do it to make fun of them. Do not do it to belittle their intelligence because people used to try to do that with me. And that's what I don't do with people unless if they ask me to or unless if I want to get some clarity. But I don't do it in a way to make them feel like they're dumb. And that's what certain people did with me growing up. And to this day, as an adult, people have been doing that with me. And even on YouTube, I've talked about this a few times before, but it's usually mostly when it comes to my Spanish, but we all know my Spanish is not good, but so that's, that's fair. That's fair in that area. But when it comes to my English, certain people, um, they don't really come for me, but it's more like they will make fun of me because I would take my time saying certain words, but that's because that was when I didn't really know what I was doing on YouTube. And I'm a person who likes to take their time while talking and eating. I don't like to eat quick unless if I really got something to say or I do my warm ups or I do um, whatever to like make me, you know, go faster and stuff. I'm not a person who likes to speed. I like to take my time and that's okay. But of course not everybody's gonna be like me, which is totally fine. Just don't be disrespectful. Aside from what she said, I I did not experience colorism for my family, thank God. My family loved me the way I am and didn't be little me for being my complexion. And that's because the majority of us are brown to darker skinned in my family. When it comes to colorism, I experienced it mostly at school, mostly middle school and high school. It's actually more common with mixed race people, specifically mixed with black people than it is with light skinned black people, believe it or not. But it's rare when they picked on me or be little mean stuff. It was like a few occasions here and there, but for the most part, it's always someone who is mixed race, biracial, however you prefer to call it. And I have a few stories, but I'm going to only share one of them because that's how comfortable I am to share it. But also, most of the things that happened that were disgusting, I've talked about it in a few videos before, and I don't want to talk about it you know more in detail and stuff like that but one time i think i was in the seventh or the eighth grade and this guy he was he was definitely black american and non-black puerto rican aka he was mixed race right and we went on this trip i forgot where we went to this trip on right and we were walking to the sixth train to go to morrison Avenue or something like that to stop. I forgot the name of the freaking stop, but whatever, right? So, this guy he was talking so much crap about me, and I forgot what he was talking about, but it was so stupid. But all I remember was that he was um, making fun of me because of the way I sound, you know, like my voice, and then also he was making fun of me because of because of the way I walk in. I forgot it was so much stupid shit, but it was like those few things that happened. And I remember he was like trying to show off talking about all that. He's more of a man than I am. Keep in mind, we were both teenagers at this time. And now I think I was older than him by one or two years. But yeah, this situation upset me so much. And that's when I was like, I'm definitely not gonna be talking to you. Yeah, I experienced colorism definitely growing up in middle school and high school. Of course, middle school, horrendous. High school, hmm, whatever. And um, now we think of, maybe we think of a high school one. Yeah, I cannot think of a high school one. And my, that was more recently compared to middle school.
In 2015, Janine Desmond Harris made an article on white people thinking that lighter skinned black people and lighter skinned non black people are smarter. She states, There's a broad assumption that this phenomenon, a preference for light skin over dark, and a company discrimination is contained within the black community and other communities of color. But now research suggests that some white people buy into colorism too. I do want to acknowledge that this is not colorism. This is racism. Okay, let's continue reading the article. In a new study published in the journal Social Current, Venovia University's Nance Hainum found that all things being equal, white interviewers deemed lighter skinned blacks and Hispanics more intelligent than darker skinned people who had identical educational achievement, vocabularies, scores on the political test, and a variety of other factors. The results provide good reason to believe that what Hainan calls white colorism exists, and they raise concerns about what unfair complexion-based beliefs about who's smart and who's not can have in every area of American life. Looking at the results for 223 African American and Hispanic subjects who were interviewed by white interviewers, he found that African Americans and Latinos who were deemed to have lighter skin tones were also significantly more likely to be seen as intelligent. Axial statistics based on a Pew Research Center of 68,000 U.S. adults between 2019 and 2020 states, Afro-Latino adults who say their race is white, 28%, Black, 25%, some other race, 23%, two or more races, 16%. Over 6 million Americans, many more than previously known, identifies Afro Latino, according to a Pew Research Center study released this week. The Big Picture The results of the survey show the nation's evolving diversity and the complex racial and ethnic makeup of Latinos in the U.S. Nearly 30% of respondents who identify as Afro-Latino also said their race is white, illustrating the complicated perspectives Americans have on race and ethnicity. Afro-Latinos are of African descent and from Latin American or Caribbean heritage. While I appreciate this whole information stuff, it doesn't go into more specifics on who identifies as Afro-Latino? How they look? Are they mixed? Are they not? Are they fully black? You know, I want to know more and more of these details. And I want to know how many were men, how many were women. But of course, that's a so many people. Six million is so many people. But also, we have to acknowledge that there are more things in between. And certain people do not even know what they are. And this is another issue when it comes to these type of surveys because we're not going to know exactly what is true and what is not. But of course, we got to go based on this, I guess, because it's a powerful source. Pure research is a powerful one. So, good, I guess. But I just wish it was more in detail. But I just wanted you guys to see that. In 2021, there was a Pew Research Center study, and it was with over 3,400 Latinos. And of course, it wasn't specific enough for my liking, but they tried. Basically, they were talking about how you guys feel about receiving colorism and or how does that affect your daily life with work and etc. If you see the statistics, it shows that darker skinned people are seen as bad and they do not get as much prosperity as their lighter counterparts whereas 
if you're lighter skin, you experience more of an advantage within the United States system, if that's a better way to put it. But that's basically what were the questions being asked. This is the part where I was like, in this portion of the survey, they were asking the contendants on how they will identify their complexions. And the majority, for what I saw, they identify as not being too dark. And then there were people that barely identified as being dark, specifically brown to darker skin. And this is what I'm talking about. You cannot do a survey like this about colorism and only focus on people who are either lighter skinned or white. And also we have to remember that Latinos are all different races, all different ethnic backgrounds, all different complexions, whatever. And I just, I just feel like there has to be a better way to do these type of research results and then gain more strategic statistics because like I'm not going to be able to know how legit this is and of course I know they trying peer research center that they gotta do more like I said it seems like they barely had anyone who are brown to darker skin aka Afro Latinos to be in these service and yes I do know there are dark Asian people but they're not dark like a person who is black yes i know there are indigenous people who are darker skinned too but you can tell a difference between a darker skinned indigenous person a darker skinned asian person versus a darker skinned black person or african person or however you prefer to call it in this portion of the video i want to focus on two creators who happen to be black and they men and also i watched them which by the way you guys should check out their content one of the creators names is turb and if you do not know who is turb turb is a black african man and he came to canada when he was five years old he talks about facing colorism in his video titled reframing black identity ethnic or racial groups. Me being a dark-skinned African male have experienced this my whole life. Like I deserve reparations for all the Ebola lights off jokes I've got my whole life. Eve, aren't you like, aren't you like African? Yeah, Clarence, I am African. Don't you have like Ebola? <laughs> Ebola. How black you are. Some of this racism may also be internal, meaning for whatever reason, sometimes you'll face racism from another black person just for being darker skin. This is TMI, but I never really thought I was attractive in my life until like grade 12. But Turb, everyone has insecurities that no, these insecurities were because of colorism. Obviously, now your boy is in his best spirits as a melanated. I give him props for sharing this because I definitely believe it. I've heard it before. And now when I think about it, people used to make jokes about me too when it comes to like, you know, shutting down the lights. And there was a point in time when I thought I was not attractive too. So I understand where he was coming from, especially when you're hearing racist people telling you that you're ugly all the time or making fun of your black features. And um, even when people within your community making fun of your features too because there were a few black people and mixed with black people who made fun of my features as well but it was not as prominent as it was with non-black people specifically non-black latinos it, but it does sting a bit when it's your own people making fun of you but then at the same time it's like i want to be in community with you and i want to give you grace but thankfully things are better now that i got older and Terra being darker i know he's gonna experience way more issues when it comes to colorism i appreciate him sharing his story and i hope things are better for him and of course if he does experience colorism again let me know you know we could we could get these people the second creator is foreign man in the foreign land 
And if you do not know who's Foreign Man, Foreign Man was born in the Bronx to Bahamian parents and moved straight back to the Bahamas after being born in the United States or something like that, if I get that wrong. But yeah, he mentioned it a few times before in his video. Actually, no, he mentioned it, I think, once or twice in his videos. And of course, in a few of his live streams back then, he did mention it. In this specific video I'm talking about, he talks about black Caribbeans and colorism in his The Man Behind Marley, A Casualty of Colorism. Dun 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 dun. The boy bleaches skin. The spy even released a skin bleaching line. Like I have Maybelline and how Fenty is like, this boy say boy. Bleach your skin, I can make it into a line. I remember when this thing came out, boy. I wanted to spark this boy head off like the dog slap his owner with the rubber chicken. <laughs> Not only was Vibes already popular as a dark skinned Jamaican, but he set a trend that fellas like Safari and Alkaline and all kind of other dancehall artists have been following ever since. Uh -uh. When it comes to skin breaching, People need to stop doing that. And I know I sound biased, even though, not even what the hell I'm talking about. I am not biased. I stand with what I said. Stop skin bleaching. That is not good for your skin. Like Foreign Man said, that is not good for your skin. And you look crazy, in my opinion. Stop. Concluding statements. Yes, colorism is real, and we need to hear more from darker skinned Afro Latinos. While men experience colorism, specifically black men, black women experience colorism too, if not worse. Specifically, darker skinned black women. They do experience colorism more immensely than black men. In this video, I want to highlight black men experiencing colorism, specifically Afro-Latino men experiencing colorism, because it's out there. It's You could see it. You could definitely see it. I'm not making this stuff up. And like I said, I experienced colorism before. Now when I think about it, I didn't even mention about how people that were black just like myself, but, and keep in mind, this is, also, this is um specifically including light-skinned black people and biracial people mixed with black people they would invalidate my latino heritage because i'm black and tell me that i'm lying and that how if i'm not mixed you know stupid stuff like that and it does take a toll and i surprised i forgot to mention that when i was talking about experiencing colors in, in middle school and high school not only non-black people it was also black people doing that too of all types of shades or mixes or however you prefer to call it but thankfully with my channel and other channels like Teb and foreign man in the foreign land and of course fds and more we are getting more black men talking about these discussions and I also do appreciate the non-black people trying their best to talk about these discussions as well. Of course, they cannot talk about it the same way as we can, but they trying. And they acknowledging that there are issues that do maybe play a factor with them being a part of the issue. Or maybe them just being a bystander and not saying nothing. But now they realize, damn, I should have said something during those times. I do have hope for better representation and more things changing with the more we speak out and acknowledge that there are certain privileges that not everyone within the community have. And yeah, thank you so much if you made this far in this video. I appreciate you. Be sure to like this video, comment, and Share this video if you want to. Follow me on my social medias if you want to. 
see you when I see you. But I'm planning to release a few YouTube shorts, I think. Okay, mi gente. Okay, mi gente. Okay. Thank you and 